Now, the rest of the story. According to the gossip columns at the time, George was a real world-class jerk. I have a copy of one newspaper here, says George was a hard-drinking, foul-mouthed womanizer who at all times would prefer a girl in a bottle to anything else. And the paper goes on to describe his three most visible states of happiness as gluttony, drunkenness, and gambling. And the writer was right. To an extent, the press created George, the boozing degenerate, for the more he was publicly accused of such loathsome behavior, the more determined he became to live up to it. George was always making the papers for getting drunk or for starting a fight or for being ejected from some local joint. And then one day, George got in over his head. And that, well, that is the rest of the story. You must meet Sam Chifney. He was a jockey. Sam would tell you he was the best jockey in the country, and probably he was right. Sam always got the most from his mount. Sam Chipney could take a hopeless case of a horse and finesse him in the stretch to a victory. So it was inevitable that George the Jerk and Sam the Jockey would get together, right? George owned race horses. He bet heavily. He wanted to give his animals the best advantage possible. Sam Chipney was that advantage. At the Newmarket track, Sam rode for George. Now, one October 20, Sam rode a horse named Escape. One of George's horses, named Escape, one of George's best. Considering the horse's speed and the jockey's skill, Escape was favored overwhelmingly, and there was much betting accordingly. But guess what? Sam Chipney lost. Sam Chipney and the horse named Escape lost. Well, it's understandable that when the same horse and jockey were paired for the next day, the odds were posted at 5 to 1 against. Now the odds are 5 to 1. That was October 21. And this time when they raced, they won. So a lot of bettors lost a lot of money that day, but not George. No, George had bet a ton on Sam Chifney. And the horse escaped. And George cleaned up. Predictably followed... Accusations. The two races had been a setup. George and Jockey Sam had conspired to throw the first race by winding the horse, by giving him a bucket of water immediately prior. Sam had then prepared to make an all out effort the following day. At least that's what the disgruntled track fanatics had to say. So George the Jerk was forced to resign from Newmarket for race fixing. For race fixing, a crowning humiliation. For a man who, within a few short years, quite surprisingly, because of his gallant manner and quick wit and fashionable attire, would become known as the first gentleman of Europe. That's right. The fellow who had been forced to resign from Newmarket for fixing races became the first gentleman of Europe for George the Jerk, the drunken, gambling, girl-chasing glutton, the favorite target of the Times uh, newspaper, the racehorse owner accused of fixing races at the fabled Newmarket track gained his ungainly reputation as Prince of Wales. At last, in 1820, he achieved respectability as King George IV of England. And now you know the rest of the story.